Hello everybody, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're um, having a look at a part of a, a little collaborative uh, project that I'm doing with Craig. Um, he makes these lovely little boxes. Um, let's have a look at that first before we get going. This is um, a, a finger joint or, or um, a box joint on this lovely little box and you would have seen him go through this yesterday on just how this is made. Uh, a lovely little object um, and I just want to, um, to put a little bit of decoration on this. Okay, so um, we've got a bit of chestnut and that is going to um, serve as the lid. So that's the kind of um, rough blank. We've got the box here and you can see this is the lid. Now, there's a couple of things we need to consider before we get going. You see these like, kind of molded edges? Um, you know, we don't, if we're adding decoration to that, we need to consider, um, you know, the finished item. This is still a, a kind of rough blank. It's, it's nicely machined, but um, there's still a little bit of work to do on that um, to, to bring it into the box lid. Um, but we're just going to add a bit of decoration. And like I say, we want to just kind of avoid, um, you know, putting our decoration so it's not going to be um, cut off or, or, or routed off. So what we've kind of thought is that we'd put a little border around this. We're going to give ourselves a good 20 mil. And just in preparation for that, I've cut just a piece of paper that's roughly the kind of size that we're aiming for. Then we get a good idea of where the placement could be. Okay. And all I've done is um, I've printed off some butterflies. So I've been on Google Images and done a, um, a search for butterflies. And you can print them off different sizes and, and, and things like that. Um, and these will make a really nice decoration. And we're going to do this in a couple of ways. Um, we've got a bit of scrolling to do, not much, and a little bit of pyrography. So we're, you know, bringing in lots of different disciplines, lots of things um, for you guys to consider. And again, this is something you can make your own if you've got, you know, if you didn't fancy butterflies, just, just print off whatever you like and um, you can make a, a great um, little project from. So, first things first, um, we need to transfer or, or lay down our, um, our kind of templates onto the box. And I've kind of laid them out how I think um, they will look nice um, on, the, on the finished piece. So, let's just, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can, um, we can glue these ones on. These are the ones that are going to be uh, pierced on the scroll saw, these black ones. I've just filled them out to get an idea of, of how they're going to look as a as a aperture or a, a little window through to the box. Um, and these ones we're going to pyrography a little bit more detail. Um, I think let's just get straight to it. Um, so like I say, I've laid that out how I kind of want the project to look. So I'm going to keep that by the side. And I'm just going to glue on those two. Uh, little butterflies. So a little bit of glue on the back of both of these. And we want that one about there. Roughly, we don't, you know, we're not um, being too strict about the layout. We want them kind of fluttering across the surface. And remember to keep our distance from, from the edge. I'm just going to clean up that little bit of glue there. And now these other two I'm going to transfer on using a carbon paper. So a little bit of carbon paper here. This is, um, you know, bog standard carbon paper. Um, you can buy it online. And it's just a really quick way of, of transferring these um, in a bit more detail. So let's just have a little clear up, a little tidy up and get a bit more central on camera here. So we've got two more butterflies. We're going to have one kind of there and one there. 
That looks quite nice. It's got a little bit of movement. I might just shift them a little bit so we've got a little bit more kind of movement running through the piece. Now I'm just going to grab my masking tape. There we go. Excuse me, just a moment. And because um, I want to fix these, I don't want them floating around on the surface too much. But you can see a really quick and simple way of laying out a design, not being too fussy about it, um, but just considering that border. So um, carbon paper or graphite paper, this goes shiny side down. I'm not sure if you can quite see. We've got a shiny side and a, almost a matte side. That's just going to slide under our butterfly shiny side down. And I've got a little pen that we turned here. And I'm just going to follow that outline. And what that does is the carbon underneath is being kind of pressed onto our piece of timber and that's leaving all the markings where I'm putting my pen and putting all this detail around the shape of the leaf uh, not leaf uh, the wing so just following those outlines and this black area, I, I'm not going to colour that in because that's going to leave a bit too much carbon on the surface. But there are some little flecks on the wing. I just want to pick them out. And then hopefully when we come to pyro them, um, we can leave them bare or we can carve that back. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Make sure we've not missed anything. I think that looks okay. That's our, our little butterfly and a kind of side-on view. So the next one. This one's kind of top down so you can see all the pattern in the wings. Really pretty patterns on some of these butterflies. And this is a piece of chestnut. Um, it has that kind of open grain structure like you get on ash. Um, so it can be a little bit challenging for pyrography, but we're going to use a tip that's going to cut through all of that open grain and give us a really nice sharp finish. But we'll talk about that when we get to our pyrography. So again, not colouring in all of this black area. I'm just going around the kind of basic shape of the wing. and transferring all of this information on. Because we've got that open grain structure on this um, wood, sometimes it kind of bullies the pen or, or railroads the pen into the grain. Um, not too much of a problem now. We can always fix that when we come to the pyrography, but you can expect the pen to kind of wander a little bit as it catches on the grain underneath. So, nearly there. And always worth having a peek before you take off your um, template. Make sure you've got all the information that you need. And I'm just comparing it. That looks pretty good. So, what do we need to do now? We need to um, do a little bit of piercing on the scroll saw. So what that means is that we need to cut this shape out. Okay. Um, so we need to drill a hole. So when we get onto the saw, we can uh, thread it right through that um, the hole that we drill. So let's grab a drill. I've got a little backing board here so I'm not drilling into the bench and it's offering a little bit of support um, and stop some of that breakout that we sometimes get when we're drilling through. So goggles on. I think I put a bit too much glue on there but 
Let's keep our fingers crossed. We should get away with it. I'm going to just engage the little brad point. That's going to pierce through the glue because sometimes this stuff likes to wrap its way around. Drill speed's on two. So we're going nice and fast and straight through the project. Not quite made it through yet. It felt like it popped out of the bottom. But there we go. There's our hole. And nice clean exit on there by having our support board and this kind of um, lip and spur type uh, drill bit. Again, let's just check we've made it right the way through. Lovely. So that's ready now for um, whatever work we want to do on it. We've got our holes drilled for our piercing on the on the scroll saw, and we've got our um, carbon on there ready for when we want to do our pyre. Okay. So that's how it's going to look. Let's take it over to the scroll saw and um, and just cut these uh, butterfly shapes out. So just bringing my chair in. <coughs> a few pre-checks I'm going to make before we get cutting. We want to make sure that our foot's in place, that our project can swing right the way around without fouling on our hold down clamp. So that should just sit just above the project and that should stop it from um, grabbing and, and lifting. Um, also acts as a bit of protection from the blade, although it's a very safe machine to use this one. So we can take our cam lever off or if you've got um, the, the craft or, or something similar, you need to just let the tension off at the back of the machine. Okay. But this one, we've got that nice quick release, and we can lift the arm up out of the way, and we're just going to thread that blade through our hole. And we can close that back down. Nice firm grip on the blade, because we need to add a bit of tension to that. And then we're ready to cut. Um, so this is a kind of contained shape. I'm using a modified geometry number five, and that will give us a really nice clean cut on the bottom of the project as well. I'm going to save a little bit on sanding. And that's always a good thing. Okay. Just going to manoeuvre my blower to keep that sight line clear once we get cutting. And off we go. I think I'm going to cut out the basic shape of the butterfly first. So his wings. So what's happening at the moment, I'm getting a lot of suction down onto the table. So I'm just going to pop the extractor off a moment. And I'm going to cut myself a little bit of a relief. So that way the air is being pulled through the project and it's not stopping me from, um, from moving it around. So let's join back up. I'm going to cut a big relief hole. Remember this is all waste in here. And then hopefully that will make it a bit more manoeuvrable. Good. Just checking the extraction port there. Um, I have drilled a couple of holes in it for that very reason, to stop that full suction onto the workpiece. And I'm just going to skip past that detail there. I want to take a bit more care with that. For now, I'm just removing the bolt.
We have a really nice flat machined piece of timber here. Um, and that's why it's getting so, um, you know, why it's proving a little bit of a, a challenge to move around on the table. So let me just remove that one as well. Now we've got a bit more room for the air to go through, um, allowing it to be a bit more manoeuvrable. Um, just coming in on these little details here. Okay. So what's happening at the moment? My extraction is really pulling the um, the project down onto the table, and it's making it very difficult to manoeuvre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill another hole in my extraction port, and hopefully that will um, give us a little bit more leeway with that. So, 7 mil, that's going to give us another little hole. And what I'm talking about is the extraction port just under here. You can see where the hose joins on. Um, and only do this if this is your machine and or you've got permission to. I'm just going to drill a little hole. Down. easy as that and I think I'm going to do another one for luck because that was really difficult to move um, where are we going to go in here yeah, I think so just bringing it around spacing those holes out there we go so top tip that if you've, your extractor is just sucking that bit too hard um, you can relieve it by um, drilling a hole in your extraction port now let's see if that makes a difference. We'll get back to cutting. Yep, it feels a lot more maneuverable on the table now. Because this is so flat and our workpiece is flat, um, it causes a little vacuum underneath. Makes it really difficult to, um, to move. But I can feel already that's just eased off a bit. So coming round our shape here. Oops. So we just let go of our blade there. Let's do that up nice and tight. Make sure we're not broken underneath. Okay. shape of our butterfly and that should be the last bit. Oh no, we've got his head to do there. Can't miss that bit. So in that little cut there, I need to swing the project right the way around to cut that head shape. And then I'm going to come in from this side. There we go, let's pop that out. And we've got a couple of antenna. I'm being really careful with these, they're really thin, so I'm just getting the project in position. 
and I'm going to swing or pivot the workpiece as I go and back out. And same the other side. Nice grip on that. So that's our first butterfly cut. And we can tidy up any little bits with a needle file. Um, make that nice and tidy. Afterwards. So I think I'm going to... We've got such a small cut here, I think I'm going to stop the extractor. I found it quite difficult to manoeuvre that. Um, we're not going to create much dust with a little cut like this. Um, and you could always pop your, your dust mask on if you find it's um, starting to become irritating. There we go, that's a lot easier now. So we're just slowly coming around this shape. Very kind of distinctive shape of a butterfly. And then I'm just going to make a beeline for my um, hole that I drilled. I like to turn that off um, and just take that piece out and see what we've got left to, to cut. So we've got this little area um, just at the bottom of the wing here and I'm going to put in a couple of little bits of information like his um, antenna. So blade back in the holder and do that up nice and tight this time and then off we go. When I'm starting a new cut, we just want to rest the teeth on, form a little shoulder before we really start pushing that cut around. And we've got a really thin section here that comes up between the wings. So we just want to be extra careful so as to not cut that off. Okay, good. Um, just stop that to remove that chip. And they're not on the actual picture, but I just want to put um, a couple of little cuts in there. Just as a nice little detail. Good. So that's our bit of piercing done. Before we carry on, I just want to clean up this little cut here and this here. Um, after taking the template off, I can see 
and where we were perhaps fighting with the um, the extractor on the table. Um, I just want to tidy them up. It's going to be a lot easier while we're sat here on the scroll saw than um, you know bringing in um, our files and things like that. So just want to have a little tidy up on that first one we did. So we've got a little cut in here where we've slightly overshot it. So I'm just bringing another cut up to that one. And then just see that ping off at the last minute. We've got the same under here on the back end of his body. So again, I'm just going to take that little pip out. And then just a bit here, I wanted to tidy up as well. Good. And that's given us a better finish on that. Um, and it's going to stop us from having to revisit it with, with too many other tools. And that looks a lot neater now here and here. Um, give it a little bit more um, definition. And so now we're onto the pyro. Just one thing I want to show you quickly is the really nice finish we get underneath um, using that modified geometry blade. Not too much uh, breakout. Um, so that's really nice. So we're going to go back over to the bench. We're going to uh, burn these little um, butterflies in. Um, so today I'm using the Antex Fire Writer. Okay, um, it's got a variable temperature on there. Um, we've got the on and off switch at the back, and when we turn it on, you'll see the little eye on the fire um, just light up. Okay, so that's how we can tell it's on. That's its little indicator. I'll pop that there. And these um, kind of hot wire type pyrography pens, they heat up really quickly. So we wouldn't have to wait around too long before we, um, you know, before we can start making our marks. So pyrography pen, this one has got a sharp tip in. Okay, so if you look at it on side, it's quite wide. If we twist it over, it's got that very fine, sharp tip. Okay, that's the sort of one we want to use on, on something like this chestnut, because it has this open grain. And if you kind of drag your fingernail um, across it, you can feel the undulations, the little bumps. Um, so this sharp one is going to kind of cut through that using it up right to use that very oh this is a cutting edge really it's almost like using a a craft knife to cut the shape give it a nice bold outline and so it's got that kind of visual punch Um, and we've got its head there, the little body, and again the little body in the middle. And again, I'm going quite deep on that bit, give it that kind of, um, you know, real darkness. His little antenna. And then we're coming around. Let me come side on like this so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Just following these lines best I can. Just taking time to pick up on those kind of gentle changes in direction. And I think 
Let's have a look at our first template. It's always a good idea to have the um, original thing close to hand. So we remember these bits and it has a little kind of black outline around the edge so we can let's put in these um, kind of veins if you will on the um, on the wings So this does take a little bit of time. Um, there's no use rushing it. We want to get it um, nice, but it's it's a nice, pleasurable time. It's not a hard chore. It's um, you know, it's kind of that kind of arty, therapeutic thing going on. I'm whizzing through it a little bit. But take your time, get these all nice and defined using that sharp edge of the um of the pyrography tip. That looks okay. And we've got this big long sweeping one coming in here. Okay, I'm just gonna reposition that so it's close by. got that border coming down there so I can just bring these lines straight across and we're good so bit by bit this um, although this sharp tip is really good on the um, loose grain it's not the best at coming around a tight curve for that you want your kind of writing tip I'm going to stick with this one. And just make a few little marks to kind of suggest the curve. So I'm lifting the pen between each one and doing a very small the straight line really, but by putting them around in a circle, it, it suggests that little curve. So we've got some um, some darker area here. So where I've been up on edge, I'm now laying the pen down flat. And we can burn larger areas in quite quickly with that. This chestnut's burning really well. Just touch the pen on and it straight away get that quick color change to that burnt. Uh, material. And we've got a bit up here, so that one is there. So we're going to black that out. Now I've got used to kind of timing my breathing so I'm not breathing in this smoke as it rises. Um, but that does take a bit of practice. Um, I would definitely recommend <coughs> we do um, uh, an air filter that has a, a carbon insert. Um, that can be really good if you're doing, um, you know, a lot of this kind of wood burning. And that takes a lot of the smoke out of the air, all the solids that are harmful uh, to breathe in. Um, you know, a small project like this, it would be just a case of cracking the window open or having a desk fan blowing away from you, just drawing that smoke away. So this wing we're kind of seeing edge on, give it a little bit more of a different shape 
uh, to the others a little bit of kind of interest and we got just a few little very skinny legs popping out the bottom there so just again a couple of lines and just switch direction halfway through Um, again, let's make a reference to our template. You can see we've got this kind of blackened area on the back there. So let's just fill that information in. Again, just laying the pen down a bit flatter, using that wide um, part of the tip to quickly fill out a larger area. That's good. So just touch in any bits you may have missed. Make sure you're kind of happy with how it's looking. I think that looks quite nice. A couple of finishing touches I want to do to that. Um, I think if we look at the actual template, there's some um, little white spots on his wing there. And I think what we might do, if we go back to that main camera, Craig, and I can zoom in a little bit on this one. No, actually, I'm going I'm <laughs> to leave that because we might lose focus. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm basically what I'm going to do is um, use um, a little flex cut um, palm tool. So this is um, the little insert on a little power handle. And this is a really small... Um, really small gouge and that's just going to help us lift out a couple of these little pips so you see I can come in from both directions and just pick out the little um, the little black areas let me just offer that up and see what we can see there there we go. So you can see we've we black that area out and instead of trying to miss that area when we were doing the pyrography, I'm actually carving it back off. Okay? And that will give us um, a, a much cleaner look instead of trying to follow that around with a pyrography pen and perhaps um, putting burns in where we don't want it. Um, using this um, worked really well. So this is just a little carving chisel. You could use whatever carving chisel you've got. Okay, and that straight away brings in these really nice little bits of information. They're like little spots on the wing. Okay. They can really elevate something like this. Um, just those little finishing touches. So, I'm just roughly carving these little um, these little spots. So we've got some here, some here, and just a few down the back of the wing there. Again, no special technique really. Just lift the handle, engage the cut, and then advance the chisel forward, and we start to get these lovely little markings. Going to do a couple on this wing here as well. You can see that changing colour. So we're cutting just beneath our burn mark and getting these really nice, kind of vivid little spots. Okay. So I'm just going to use my chisel just to push that bit out. A little bit of a clean up and a bit of sanding. 
and we've got the beginnings of a really nice uh, patterned um, thing. We've got a couple of little holes that we might be able to just have a peek at what's in the treasure inside our um, our little jewellery box. Um, so really nice um, beginnings of a, of a lid there. We're going to pass this over to Craig. He's going to work his magic on it and um, and make this into a really nice little keepsake, uh, a nice forever uh, project. Okay, so that's it really. A nice kind of simple one today. We used a couple of techniques. We've we've um, we cut a little bit of piercing on the scroll saw. Um, struggled a little bit with that extraction, but I showed you a way that we could um, perhaps alleviate that a little bit. Um, but yeah, bit of piercing, bit of pyrography, and we've got ourselves a really nice um, kind of decorative lid to go on this beautiful box um, that Craig uh, made yesterday. And so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to give us a thumbs up um, and subscribe and like. Um, and we'll see you again soon for another Woodworking Wisdom. <laughs>